pray that I might speak to you this morning in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I think we all know those voices in our society, the ones that they constantly try to bombard us with the message that we are not good enough. We're not skinny enough, we're not pretty enough, we're not young enough, we're successful enough, not smart enough. These kind of voices is the stuff that advertising feeds on. The world of advertising, it tries to create an insecurity within us in order to push their product on us. Buy this and it will make you whole. But here's the thing. Those advertising voices, those voices that we get in our, those cultural voices, they are nothing compared with that inner voice that a lot of us often hear in our own minds. A voice that tries to convince us within our own being that we are not good enough. Sometimes worse than that, a voice that tries to make us feel like we are worthless. Or that we need to become someone and something other than we are right now before we will be deserving of the love and acceptance and respect of others. That somehow we need to change ourselves before we will be deserving of that. I've shared this with you before, but in my own life, I suffer from anxiety and self-esteem issues. And I have for many years. And when it's at its worst, there's this voice that is in my head that I cannot get to shut up. It's a voice that, like I said, is constantly telling me, you're not good enough. Tells me, you don't work hard enough. That your sermons aren't good enough. That I don't visit enough. A voice that tries to convince me that I'm a fake and a fraud as a priest. And I have to tell you, it can be absolutely and utterly exhausting trying to do everything you possibly can to live up to the expectation that that voice is calling you to in your own mind. It can be absolutely and utterly exhausting trying to live up to that expectation of being perfect all the time in order to prove that voice wrong. That might be me. I might be on my own. But the fact that billions of people around the world have made New Year's resolutions to change something about themselves, to go on a diet, to lose some weight, to stop smoking, to stop drinking, to spend more time with family, to be kinder, more generous. The fact that billions of people desperately want to change something about themselves tells me that maybe I'm not alone after all. Now, it's one thing to make a resolution if you want to take better care of yourself or if you want to improve on a particular area of your life because we should all be striving to be better versions of ourselves on an ongoing basis. But what is the motivation for wanting to be a better person? It's another matter altogether if the motivation for your New Year's resolutions is to prove a voice wrong about you not being worthy of love and acceptance just the way you are right now. So I want to do something a little bit different today. I want you to listen to a song that has kind of become my mantra over the past few years. It's become my go-to anytime that voice in my own mind starts trying to tear me down. I've shared it with a number of my friends. It's called Be Kind to Yourself by Andrew Peterson. I've actually shared the lyrics with you before, but today I want you to actually listen to the song. And as you listen to it, anytime you hear the words, I love you just the way that you are, anytime you hear the words, be kind to yourself, 
I want you to picture God saying those words directly to you. So what I can take away from that song is that, yes, there are those voices in our culture that constantly try to tell us we're not good enough, and yes, there are a number of us who have even louder voices in our own minds that are anything but kind. There's those voices that try to tear us down and tell us we are worthless. But there is another voice. There is a voice that wants nothing more than to be a light shining in the darkness of all of our anxieties, of all of our self-doubtings. It's a voice that says, I love you just the way that you are. A voice that says, you can't ever expect to be perfect. It's a fight that you really do have to forfeit. It's a voice that says, you belong to me no matter what you do. And here's the thing, we have a choice, whether we think we have any control over this or not, we have a choice as to which voice we are going to listen to. Which voice are we going to allow to have power in our lives? We have a choice as to which voice we are actually going to let shape the direction that our lives will take and the purpose and the meaning 
that our lives will take on? Which voice will you choose to listen to in your life? So today in the life of the church, we're celebrating the baptism of Jesus. And that offers us the opportunity today to spend some time reflecting on the significance of baptism in our own lives. And the difference, and that what happens to us, and the difference what happens to us in baptism makes in how we actually see ourselves and how we live our lives. Here's the thing about baptism in an Anglican context. My experience over the past 18 years is that we don't really place a lot of significance on baptism in our lives. I could be wrong, but I think that baptism in the church has become a nice ritual that we celebrate when a new baby is brought into the congregation. I think that we celebrate that ritual and then often we don't really think about our baptism that much anymore. But the reality is, baptism should be the most important thing that ever happens in a person's life. It should shape and direct your life from the moment water is poured over your head in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, from that moment on, being marked as Christ's own forever should change us, should shape us, should influence who we are. So when Jesus was baptized, as he rose up out of the waters, and as he was praying, the heaven was opened and a voice came from heaven and spoke directly to him. This voice said to him, You are my son. You are my beloved. With you I am well pleased. In a culture full of voices that constantly try to tell you that you're not good enough, in the struggles that a lot of us have with the voices in our own minds telling us we are not worthy enough or deserving enough, in baptism there is another voice, a voice that says, You are my child. You are my beloved. With you I am well pleased. A voice that reminds us that our true identity is to be a child of God. A voice that tells us that we do not have to be perfect. We do not have to do anything that other, other than what we are right now. Because we are already loved at this moment, right now, for who we are. But again, we have that choice. Whether we think we do or not, we have the choice which voice are we going to listen to. We have a choice as to which voice we're going to give power to. We have a choice as to which voice we're going to allow to shape the direction that our lives will take and the purpose and the meaning our lives will take on. Baptism. Baptism is about dying to an old way of living. And perhaps that old way of living is a life where we utterly exhaust ourselves by trying to prove all of those other voices wrong when they tell us we are not good enough, deserving of love and acceptance. Baptism is about dying to that life and rising to a new way of living in which we finally accept that there is nothing at all we can ever do to earn God's love because we are already loved right now in this very moment for who we are right now. The motivation for our choices and our actions in this new life, it stops being about trying to prove ourselves to anyone. It stops being about trying to prove to ourselves that we are okay. We are set free from that prison. Our motivation for living as children of God becomes about living in response to the reality that we are loved just the way that we are. And so in our lives, we give and we serve and we forgive and we love and we put in effort and we try to better ourselves, not to earn, but in response to the fact that God first loved us. So which voice will you listen to in your life? 
May it be the voice of God that declares, you really are my child. I really do 